Okay. Well, thanks, Stephanie, for joining me on the dev update for this week. Going through, looking at some CMS changes in Plenty and just giving folks a little bit of a preview about what's going on and where we're at and status update and that kind of thing. How's your week going? It's going good. How's your week going? Good. Busy as always. All right, let's hop into mm -hmm. it. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so uh, we've had a, a bunch of updates. I, I tried to outline them over here in this little notes um, app here, just to kind of go through some of the things that have changed since the last time that we've done one of these. Uh, one of the things that uh, the big changes here is a, a fix to um, the page adding workflow. So previously we were having a bug on the last call um, where when we tried to add new content, basically what would happen is uh, sometimes it would load the, the blueprint for a different content type and the layout for a different content type. So sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. And basically what's happened here is Jesse, one of the other developers on the project has come through and updated um, this. So we're doing a, a hash based routing for adding new pages. And, um, and he's gone through here and he's changed some of this information. So this is a router that we're using. It's a project called Navade. And uh, that has been updated down here to actually handle this um, and, and map to the correct content type and the correct blueprint down here. So. Um, hopefully this is working a little better. I've tested it on my end. It seems to be working. So let me just kind of go and show a little bit about what that looks like. <clears throat> so we're over here on um, a example plenty site. This corresponds to a repository over here. So this BBB repository, and I have my local server running over here. Um, so this is all kind of connected up, but if I come here and I try to add a new page, so I can come here to the add, uh, we have three different content types. So one is pages, test and yo. So if I add a new pages page, I can say, hi, Steph, and I can create that. And it goes to the blueprint, um, hi, Steph, and it also starts adding this um, uh, default information based on that blueprint. So you can see up here that we're getting the hash routing here. So it's a hashtag add pages, and then it has the file name that we're using up here. Mm -hmm. um, and that what that allows us to do is we can reload this. So I can do a control R to do a hard server reset, and it doesn't break the page. We can still come here and you know, uh, edit the page like we were doing before. So I can do high stuff. And then I could save this. Changes are committed. If I come back to our repository and I reload this, you can see that we're creating content high stuff here. If you look at that, that's a full JSON page um, with the information that we have in here. So that's looking pretty good. Um, we could also go and add multiple pieces of uh, content. So previously, when we come up here from a, a page we were at before, and we were to add a new piece of content, it was getting the old information here. Um, so this would used to still say, hi, Steph. Um, it doesn't anymore, so that's good. So we can say, uh, bye, Steph. And it, and it adds the new blueprint with the default information. And so enter title here. So good, bye, something like that. Um, and maybe we'll, we'll take these off. Okay, save that. And you can see over here that if we come back to our project, this is now getting uh, created with the bicep. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and so one of the problems we had before is when we were doing this, I, I used to be doing a routing without the hash. So we'd do something like, like this. And the problem with that is if you reload this server-wise, you get something like this, right? So it was a little more fickle, but I think Jesse had a great plan of, of doing hash-based routing like that. So um, we always have a fallback here based on the page that we're, we're loading. So that's that's good. Yeah, so that's great. So that is um, that change should be wrapped up in the new release, which I want to talk about down here. So we did um, some releases down here from version uh, 5.6 to version 0.5.8. Um, basically, what we did is uh, incremented versions because we had some failing builds. So there are a couple of things going on with our builds. One of them is um, we're using that new all pattern in our embedded file system. So essentially, this was an issue we had over here. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Um, let me come to our issues and closed. And okay, so we had an issue here where learner files uh, with underscores were not being included. So essentially what's happening is the Go embedded file system has this new construct of a pattern all, and that allows you to include files that begin with an underscore. So something like blueprint.json is included. Um, but essentially this is only available into newer versions of Go. So um, although I'm using a, a newer version of Go on my local computer, uh, in our build process, in our GitHub actions, we're using Go 
uh, 0.16, and we needed to update that to 1.18. So basically that can include these files. So that was failing our builds before, but now that we're on the newer version, um, that should be good. So basically uh, 056 was a, a bad, re a broken release. 057 was a broken release, but 058 should encompass that change. And it should also have the, the page fixes that we just took a look at there together. So that's kind of why we did those rapid increments there. Um, it's just a, that's just a, the method of semantic versioning. Um, basically my understanding is what folks do is if they do have a bad build, they just have that as a bad release. So instead of trying to re-release uh, five, six again with different content, we, we just say, okay, that's a bad build and we move on and increment there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And we try to tie as, as best as possible uh, all these issues back to like where the release is. So when we close the issue, I try to tie them back to the release and link them to the release page over here so you can see kind of what's going on here. Obviously, the change log here doesn't have a lot of information because this is just fixing the broken build. You would have to go back to like other releases. So like five, seven to see the other changes here and, or like even five, six is going to have most of the, the changes that we actually had. So if we click into five, six. Um, well, I thought we'd be able to see a full. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how I would um, how I can see all the the change log information there. But essentially, most of it is going to be tied to five six, but not super important here for this uh, purpose. Um, another change that we've done is better error handling. So, error handling is something that has definitely been a sticking point for me with plenty sites. Um, it's hard to debug them at times. So. Um, this should be a lot better now. Um, although I think there's always room for improvement, but let's take a look here just at what that might look like. So for instance, I'm going to take a look at maybe a content page. So um, let's look at our pages and maybe our about page here. Actually, do you know what a good way to do it is? Let's start, let's do this. Let's do a touch of content um, pages and we'll say new, new dot JSON. So when you do a touch command, basically what we're doing is we're creating an empty file um, and an empty file is not valid JSON, right? So if we touch this file here and I try to plenty serve this file, a couple things are happening here. So we're getting a little more error information. So we know which part of our build step we error out. So we're error out, we're erroring um, during the data source collection stage. Then we have some information about what's happening saying we cannot get all content from the project. It's like, well, what's happening? We're, we're getting an error when we're actually trying to pull the content pages new new.json. And that's the, the, the file that we just created here, obviously. Um, and then it says unable to read content because unexpected end of uh, JSON uh, input. So that's really helpful because now I can come here and say, okay, well, I know this file is a problem. I, it's having trouble reading the JSON. What's happening here? Um, I go into the file and I see that it's completely blank. And I know uh, because I know JSON and that needs to have the curly brackets. Um, so I can at least come here and I can run that and then I can serve error that way. Um, well, we have more errors here. So data source build step. Can't. Oh, I think this is also because we have, it's expecting certain keys in here. So we, <laughs> this is a, another good point. So we'd have to come here and look at something like about and give it the keys that it actually expects to have because we're not handling this in our template. So this, is a, this was a bad example. If you're handling the, the keys in your template appropriately, you wouldn't really have to worry about that. But um, in this case, uh, you have to make sure that, you know, you're handling those. So you say like this, a little bit of a confusing example, but hopefully folks are following along with what the heck I'm talking about. Basically our templates, we're not handling those. So now that's a valid build and we could come back to our site and we could, um, you know, we could, we could run it. Um, you should also be able to do like template um, debugging as well. So we could go to like a layout, we could go to our global, maybe our HTML, that's our main template. And let's put in here, we'll say like, not a valid tag, something like that. So that's obviously not valid HTML. That should break a site. Um, and we could come here and we could serve this. That should break. So it says, okay, error in the client build step, could not get all the layouts, could not compile our layouts global HTML. So it knows what file we're at. And then it says attempting to close an HTML that was not, uh, uh, an element that was not open. So you kind of get some debugging information here and then you could kind of go through them and be like, okay, let me take a look at that file. And hopefully you can see like, okay, this tag is broken here and I could clean it up that way. Um, the other thing that's happening is the, the build is actually breaking out. So previously we were just throwing errors, but we we're allowing the, the build command to continue and the server to continue. The problem with that is if you do that during CI and for whatever reason you're breaking your site, you could potentially try to deploy a broken site. Um, and we don't want to do that. We want the build to completely 
uh, exit and so the CI stops and then at least you can go and debug it before deploying a broken site. Is that does that make sense? Do you have any questions on this stuff? I feel like I'm No, no, it's it's fast. great. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. It's great. Seems so, like you did that pretty fast. You you um made better error hand handling pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's and we try to do as many improvements as possible. Basically taking the method of trying to find the biggest sticking points and the biggest meet, missing features and just implementing those as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and just to show kind of like a broken build command. So like you can see here that our last command that we pushed here gets this little check mark. So the pipeline passed. This would be an X and it would stop the deployment if that errored out. So that should be um, that should be better. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, another thing is that we now have build specific config and fire uh, uh, files for environments. Um, and uh, what's happening here is essentially um, every site, and let me just um, let me just get rid of all this stuff. I'm gonna get rid of my other uh, what do we have here? Okay, now I'm gonna pull the the changes that we wrote up there. Okay. Um, now that we're up to date here, let me see here. So um, essentially every plenty site runs off of this um, file, this plenty.json file. This is a site-wide configuration file. So you could take a look at something like this. Um, you know, you can do route overrides in this file. You can specify base URLs. You can choose what the name of your build um, folder is for your local development. You can set different ports and then you can also connect to the CMS among other things. You can do other things in this file as well. But this is kind of like the brain of how the site is set up. Um, the challenge is there might be things that you want to do um, differently, right? For instance, I'm using this uh, local host here, right, for um, uh, my CMS right now. Um, but this will not work if I actually tried to visit my remote URL. So, um, for instance, we have in our section here. So this is our, our deployed site. Um, then we have this static site. I'm not sure what if this is a working state, but okay. Yeah, so this is the deployed um, URL here. So if we try to log into this site right now, um, I imagine it's going to break. So if I go to admin and I go to login, see, it's trying to send us back to the local host here. Um, do you, sorry, do you see that in the URL? The local host. That's because I have my configuration file set to local host here. What this should be set to, if we wanted that to work, we should set it to this URL here. So that's what the, that's what um, this URL should be. It should be this, but I changed that just to get my local host essentially working. So what I would really um, probably want to do, and this is going to change because the whole local work uh, flow is going to change, but what you could do is you could copy your plenty.json file and I could name it something like plenty.local.json. This could be anything that you want to name it to though. This could just be plenty.l.json or just like plenty local. Um, you can really name it whatever you want. So I'll, I'll just do something like that. Copy plenty local. Um, and then I can you have plenty local and I could change this back to localhost. Um, so I could come in here and I could say, okay, I want this to be localhost 3000 and uh, HTTPS. And that way I could have two different logins. Um, and then what I would do essentially is when I do a plenty serve, I'd point it to um, my config to plenty local.json. And I would serve from that, that specific file. Um, and that can be really useful, especially for things like base URLs, right? So if we come in here and we take a look at this, um, we have this base URL, which are, we our local is already aware of removing base URLs and making those work. That's essentially um, for folks who aren't sure what base URLs are. Um, like this site here, everything is served off the BBB folder, right? Like, so the home is at this BBB location. It's like a subfolder. Um, and then maybe you have like a dev site that's off like dev, and then maybe the production site has no subfolder like that. So you want to account for different base URLs. Essentially what you could do is you could create different environments here and you could, you could set them up differently. So you could be like, this one's off dev, um, the next one's off stage or something like that. And then your prod is maybe just off nothing. Right. Um, or you could completely remove the base URL in that case. So there's a lot of different things you could do, um, with these different environments. And essentially just in your build, you would just do something like this. You do plenty build pass the configuration file for that specific information, and then you could have a different environment build for that specific thing. Um, that enables us to do really cool things. Like if you looked at the issue, I explained um, uh, what my thinking was here. So if I came to here and looked at closed, and let's see. Um, 
multiple plenty uh, JSON configuration files. So I talk about a workflow here where this is helpful. For, um, uh, I guess I didn't put that much detail in here, but essentially, yeah, you can do those different base URLs for like staging, production, and whatever. Um, so it's helpful in that case. Um, anyways, does that make sense with the usefulness of that and why that'd be um, helpful? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, you really could do things like have a specific edit um, URL, like where you only edit on a protected path and then you have it deployed to a non-protected path. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with something like that. But hopefully that's helpful for folks. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. okay. So that's that. Um, another thing is I uh, made some internal changes. So essentially that's this right here. So uh, naming conventions, we are using an object called media list to prep our commits. So essentially... You can commit multiple pages uh, or multiple um, assets. So for instance, like if you were to come into your site, you can upload like multiple files, right? Um, so you could grab like a few of these and just like upload them uh, all at one time. So it does multiple commits. We were naming that media list before, but it's not only media list, right? Now it's a, you could do pages, um, you could be editing pages. So it, uh, I thought that was just not an appropriate name. So I changed that um, everywhere from media list to commit list, because it's basically the commits that we're doing. Um, I'd also thought about uh, potentially naming uh, the publish.js file to something else like GitLab commit. Um, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to abstract different backends. So like GitHub or Bitbucket or um, Gogs and Gitty. So um, for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. But this is something I'm thinking about to, to make it sure that it's clear what we're doing. Um, and we want to abstract those different backends out in clear, as clearly defined roles as we can. So we're not mushing everything together and making it really hard to, to switch out backends. We want it to be like a really seamless process. So just thinking through some of those things here. Um, and then there's also a content deletion workflow now. So um, previously, uh, if you came in here and you edited a page, let's take a look. We have a bunch of pages down here. Um, let's, Steph is great. This is a good one. Hey, sorry, I created this. Um, so essentially, uh, if you come here and you edit uh, this page, um, you know, you can save. So I could do stuff that is really cool still, right? So I could come here, I could save this. Um, if we went back over here and we looked at our static sites, we can see the update. So it says updated content stuff is really great. And you can kind of see the, the diffing history right here. You can see that we added still, so that's great. But now you can come in here and we could just delete this completely. So I could come and I could delete the page. And so it says, it, it, it redirects us to the home page now. So now we're back on the home page. And maybe I'll make that a little more clear what happened there. But that stuff is cool page got deleted. If you come over here, we can actually see it applied a delete action. So you can see this whole page has been removed now. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wow. That's, I didn't even realize that you did that part. That's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think we yeah. have all the major actions in there now. Um, so you can, you know, you can edit an existing page, you can remove an existing page, you can um, upload content here, you can drag and drop or upload multiple files at one time. When you upload a file, it gets added to your library immediately here. Uh, oops, oh, my server's not running. Um, Got to actually run the server. Uh, um, yeah, you can like upload those. Those will appear over here. Then you can download them. Um, you can delete things. Like you could actually come here and delete um, files, and it will, um, you know, remove it from your display immediately, which is which persists, which is nice. So you can come over here, and they're still removed. Um, and you also uh, get the the server rendered feedback over here of having those two files deleted, and you can check out and see what's going on there. So like the API is kind of coming through and doing that stuff, which is great. Um, uh, you can do adding of pages now, and you can add multiple pages in a row, and that should, you know, that should work. So, one, save, page, two, save. So you can you can just keep like adding those right in a row if you want to do something like that, and all that all that's generally working. So I think we're like in a pretty good place in terms of getting functionality there. Um, I think now it's just making things a little bit nicer, right? Um, so like when you're adding media, you should be able to like get the URL for it and start using it in your site. So basically we want the the front end to feel like as real-time feedback as possible. So you're getting that app-like experience, um, but have the back end catching up with its you know builds behind the scenes. So you're actually getting it um, fully rendered out. So um, we want it to feel just like one cohesive process, but I think we're not quite there yet, but at least the functionality is kind of getting baked in at this point.
Yeah, that does that make sense? <laughs> any questions yeah. or any thoughts on any of this? Um, I don't know. You're making a lot of good progress in a short amount of time. It's uh, it's really seamless with uh, GitLab. It's, yeah, yeah. It's really. I can't believe how seamless it is. Yeah, thanks. I I think um, it, it's good to we're trying to focus on GitLab alone right now for the back end, just because GitLab seems to have the best features in terms of, you know, GitLab pages and their CI and all those different things. They allow for Pixie auth and, and, and stuff like that. So we wanted to have GitLab fleshed out really well. And then we can start thinking about other backends. Um, unfortunately, Git, GitHub does not support the Pixie workflow. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, so like the order of operations is like Git, Git, GitLab working really well and then get a local um, workflow that works really well too. So the local shouldn't have to worry about um, what's happening on the remote at all. So local has an awareness that it's local. Like we, we have flags that work in the background that let it know that. And so basically what should happen on a local, you should just be able to log in and it should write JSON back to your local environment that you can then either choose to commit or discard at your, um, uh, your will. So, uh, that would probably be the next step. Once GitLab is buttoned up, we'll do the local workflow and then we can think about what's the next backend. Um, GitHub would be, would make sense in terms of market share, but I really think some of their tools are lacking. So, um, I'm not sure that's gonna be. I might move to something like Gogs or GitT or even Bitbucket before GitHub, since their their tools aren't fully fleshed out. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll go from there. But I think we're we're moving right along, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, folks will find this useful. I mean, um, you know, it's a it's a really low cost way to run a website, right? Like you can run it without managing a server. Uh, the hosting is essentially free, um, and there's no real security updates that you have to worry about on a weekly basis. So I'm, I'm hoping mm -hmm. this will be really great for a lot of folks who want to run their web properties without a huge overhead, um, but also own their experience. So I think people always went to services like, you know, Squarespace or Wix for that kind of um, low overhead type website development, but you don't really own your experience when you go to those kind of products. So I'm hoping that this is a way that folks can like fully own what they're doing. Um, so yeah, I, hopefully we're doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, so the, the most, current the current release that you have that includes all the things that you showed um almost so not almost. all of them let me okay. let me just take a look here just real quick and then we'll call it for the show uh but the new release ha should have um the the page fix it should have the error handling it should have the build specific config environments uh, it won't have this which is kind of more behind the scenes and it won't have the content deletion workflow yet okay. um, and some other things i'm working on so it should be close but i mean we'll keep doing more releases so Okay. Well, I don't know what happened. Are you there? Hmm. Hello. Oh, you're logged in a third time. Yeah, I guess. So I don't, I, I, I don't know. The recording maybe is still going. Who knows? Um, yeah. Yeah, my, my browser just crashed. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, yeah. So I think we get we get the gist, though. I think yeah. we probably end it mm -hmm. now. But, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Good job. Cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Steph.